well, well, well. Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. It's beautiful hump day over here from Helsinki, Finland. As always, want to be wishing you well. Want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest. Cryptocurrency Wednesdays. Is it a Wednesday? Yes, it's Wine Wednesday or is it Wasted Wednesday? Whatever the fuck they call it nowadays. Let's get into the live stream right here, right now. We can't be wasting time talking about in unimportant subjects we need to be talking about very important magic in it money business getting deep and downy dirty into it right here and of course from the intermediate time frame bitcoin still being beheld and beholden below just like caressed below this blue 377 exponential moving average right over here and very important for the overall trend identification from a from, from, uh, from a daily dolo time frame perspective and as long as Bitcoin being beheld, be, being beheld in below this area, I would be cautious uh, looking at this as potentially as potentially a trade setup right now. Actually, best seen on this three-hour total time frame right over here, which we discussed last night during the live stream. But overall, we got something like this going on. We got a nice, do you want to call it an ascending triangle? You can certainly call it an ascending triangle. But <clears throat> we got a nice uh, rise support trend line and then a flat resistance trend line. Of course, for myself, I never care about... What you call a formation, I only care about supported resistance. And so far, support is supporting, resistance is resisting. Technically speaking, this would be a more bullish resolved formation. And there is a measure move to be made off, made off of it uh, as well. It's probably going to be pointed up to that next 55 uh, 50 ish level to 5600. Let's see if that works. Yes, I believe it does. There we go. About actually a little bit overshooting it to us 5650 ish area. So overall, um, if Bitcoin were to break it onwards and outwards to the upside above 5,300, that is exactly where I'd be looking towards as, as governed by this pattern. And there would also be a breakage on the daily 377 exponential. Not only that, but if we go to a higher time frame and we put on, sorry, we take off all the drawing tools, put on the volume profile, you'll notice that we do have a nice thick AF node coming in right around that range as well, right around that 5,600-ish area. So Bitcoin being held in by, by this area right over here. You can kind of just follow it through the volume profile as well. Just seeing, just seeing that there is very little business being done all the way from here to that 5,600-ish level we could call it. And also just kind of a prior block territory. In fact, if I wanted to mark this off, could very easily do that. And going to be right over here and right over here. There we go. Getting the top of it just beautifully. And uh, and if Bitcoin does break up, that's where I'd be looking towards. However, just like I said, be just because it is an ascending triangle does not mean that uh, it's always going to break out to the upside. I mean, it's certainly more likely to, statistically speaking. Um, however, in my experience, I've seen every pattern break out every fucking possible way except for to the left. And uh, and for me, I only care about supporting resistance. So until this guy actually officially breaks and closes about a two-hour dildo above this 5,300-ish level, I would not be, you know, I would not be positioning myself for a trade. However, I would be happy to add on on on, on onto my own long, which I am still holding long uh, from 3930-ish area right over here. If we do break that area of 5,300, I will add uh, not a full position, but, uh, but you know, I'll, I'll add something worthwhile. Uh, but for now, still being resisted by this 5,300-ish level. So I would not be getting, I would not be, you know, I would not be front running myself. More importantly, when we bring up our oscillators, we do three, we do see our lower time frame stokes actually pointed up right now. So three hour stokes are, are up and do want up. Uh, if we go over here to the four hour, I believe four hour are looking a little bit weak to the downside, could very easily cross up. Uh, they will cross up if we do break 5,300, uh, no doubt about that. But still technically down. Uh, obviously, all lower time frames in that are going to be up. We got two hour right over here, up. We got hourly right over here. Actually, getting tired and up. <clears throat> but overall, I just want to show that there is a lot of descending opinions between all the different time frames right now. And when this happens, I typically go and uh, and be more conservative. Which yes, this isn't ascending triangle, but actually, actually would be looking at this to probably break down. Uh, uh, funnily enough, uh, we go over here to the ten hour. 10 hour stokes going to be having a fresh cross down. So the higher, so the medium to higher time frames will be down. Uh, 12 hours going to be technically down, but very weak as well. Daily is actually up. And uh, we got two day and three day looking tired. We got two day stokes right over here looking a little bit tired. Uh, three day stokes right over here getting way up there. Actually gaining momentum, so I do take that back. But it's we we actually have descending opinions just based upon just about every time frame actually, which makes it very difficult. <clears throat> and like I said, whenever I get into a situation like this, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Uh, just like using good old protection. And when it comes down to it, I would be saying that hey, keep in mind where we kind of are in the greater picture, and that is a picture of incredible resistance looming us or sorry, uh, hanging right over our you know right over our faces right now, right at this 5300 level. That is where the blue 377 exponential is on the. Day. Daily, but not only that, we got the two-day 200 exponential ride in this area as well. Although the two-day did have a very strong close yesterday, to be fair. The two-day is bullish. The two-day actually does want up on this uh, on, on this formation. Uh, three-day three day being beheld in by the 200 exponential as well. We just set another one in stone uh, yesterday night, I believe. And uh, as we saw, three-day stokes are still up. Three-day RSI rising into the in, into the more critical zone for the bullish territory actually as well. And if we go over here to the weekly, we got the 89, the blue, the blue um, 89, the green 55. Uh, 
staring us right in the face. We go over here to the monthly, and of course, we got the yellow 20 mic special in the, in the red 10 moon average. So all these things kind of converge on each other. It makes me very apprehensive. and makes me makes me actually want to take the other side of that. Uh, not only that, but we do have bearish divergence on a 12-hour dollar time frame right over here. Um, we do have bearish divergence, I believe, even up to a daily. Except, uh, have we confirmed? Have we confirmed bearish divergence? No, we have not. Sorry, I apologize about that. It is not bearish divergence until we actually confirm this is a local high, which has not been confirmed just yet. We need to actually tick below 51. 25 it looks like yeah 51 and a quarter if bitcoin can do that that will be confirmed and be looking for the next move down to the 50 50 ish territory and then 49 after that but for right now you know it's a time to be agnostic and while i am presenting my opinion i don't trade my opinion like i said if bitcoin breaks 5300 to the upside i do take that long i'm happy to take that long but for right now it is being resisted I know a lot of people are calling it ascending trigger right here, and technically that's right. It has the right, it has the right shape, has the right volume signature, has all the right characteristics. Nice continuation pattern as well. But like I said, I don't, I, you know, I don't trade against those exponentials until told otherwise. And, uh, and 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 nicely enough, or or conveniently enough, perhaps is the right word. Uh, the three-hour total time frame is actually agreeing with that uh, perfectly on this resistance right around uh, 5,300. So if that area gets, does get taken out, hey, I jump onto the bull side and look for that next uh, what is about 300, 400 dollar move. Not bad. Certainly, certainly tradable. Um, and I would and I would be interested in that in trading that breakout. Um, but if it does break to the downside, technically the mesh move can be made the same way, and that actually be pointing down towards 48 hundred which is where I would be looking for on a, on a legitimate pullback. Keep in mind, there will be bounces along the way, and Bitcoin's really been spending a lot of time going sideways, essentially, into this area for the last, uh, what is it, has it been a week now? Yeah, it's been over a week. Holy shit, man. Holy shit. It, it feels like it feels like it was just the other day, but uh, but no, it's actually been a little bit more than a week ago now. This was on April April 2nd and April 1st, so most of, that really, most of that rally being done right around then, uh, consolidation ever since afterwards. And that's also what, you know, another big point that I want to bring up is that more often than not, you know, price action is not breaking out or breaking down. That's why I'm a supported resistance trader. Um, <clears throat> and and realistically, I mean, you know, that's, you don't, you, you, you don't have to trade one single breakout in your life to make a living out of this. Uh, although if we do break break this next level, I would be interested. In, I would be interested in trading that one. Uh, Three hundred to four hundred dollars is certainly not uh, bad. It's almost ten percent move on Bitcoin nowadays. Four hundred dollars. I mean, I suppose a five hundred dollar move is ten percent move. So, uh, so yeah, it's 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 quite it's quite exaggerated, and, and the gains can certainly be made on something like that. But for right now, we are tightening this up this this area up quite a bit, and I would be, and more importantly, either which either way, which whichever way that we do break this, I do believe that it happens today. Um, the apex on this triangle is technically coming in. Tomorrow, but uh, you can see that we are extremely, extremely mature in this formation, and it can break at any given moment in time. Of course, we can chart this out a little bit further if you really want to get super granular with it on the lower time frames. We do have a horizontal support right over here, right around this uh, 51, 50-ish level, which Bitcoin's tested multiple times in the past couple of days. Uh, all these wicks right around here bought up pretty damn well. So if that area does break, that'd be the more clear and concise way of getting this. However, I would make a decision, even if we did break the three hour 21 exponential right over here. Now you can see that there's a little bit of test yesterday, very low volume, and uh, more importantly, a big wick to the a big wick to the downside tells me that, uh, that that one was gonna be bought back up. So if we do if we do come back down, it will likely get be weaker. But here's the thing, we actually also do have some hidden bullish divergence going on right here as well um however has that already played out i mean we did we, we put it in right here we've taken a stab towards the top of this formation i'd say that that's probably played out um and overall i kind of you know i i really want to exercise neutrality in my opinion right now whether i think it's going to break up or down the play is the same 5200 to the downside 5300 to the upside it's that it's it's that easy it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that um, while I do think that if, if it does break out to the upside, it'll likely be more of a, more of a straight shot. If it does break out to the downside, I would be looking for bounces first, uh, 5150. Then I'd look at 5050. It's going to be, a, it's, it's, it's so fucking tight in here because Bitcoin's put in so much sideways, which is actually a good thing. It's quite constructive. 5050 is going to be right over here. In fact, I would get rid of this one right here. Um, it's not, I wouldn't trade that. That's, that's not, that's going to be too fast. Uh, 5050 is probably tradable just because it also does match up with a nice gap in CMEs right over here. Which is still not, which still yet to be filled, um, down around that 50/50ish range. So I would be looking for it for an initial bounce right over there. And as you can see, CMEs actually look a little bit different right now. In fact, you could make this sort of formation right here, which would incorporate another test down to the 50/50ish area, fulfill this trend line, and still fulfill a gap fill, and then bounce up. So we could be stuck in this a little bit longer as well if if we do kind of break the more aggressive formation that we got going on right now, because CMEs don't necessarily look like spot charts. So 
So, uh, so, so 50, 50 would be an area of interest. However, I do believe that if we were to break below 5,200, regardless, uh, regardless of, uh, of, of whether we have a bounce of the 50, 50 level or not, I would be looking lower. I would be looking towards that next 4,900 to 4,850 ish area, which is where I would be looking for the ultimate pullback on Bitcoin. Now, right now on the medium to low timeframes to be very deliberate and separate them from the higher timeframes. I am, I am, you know, I, I'm looking to buy a pullback, which does that mean that I'm bearish or bullish? I mean, I, I guess it means that I'm looking for a pullback. So that would mean that I'm bearish in like the super short term time frames. And then for a little bit longer than that, I actually do think that this run tries again higher, most likely. But overall, as far as the macro time frames, do I think that Bitcoin's, you know, about to bust on through to a bull market from here? Probably not. Um, probably not. Uh, I mean, I'm open to it, but I need to see I need to see actually clear and obvious evidence. And a couple of those pieces are actually staring us right in the face. We already talked about them, actually. Uh, first and foremost would be Bitcoin closing a monthly deal above this yellow 20 minute exponential moving average right over here that would open up the gates for continuation hires probably into the 6000s um or at least test 6000 oh my god man i'm having allergies right now so i might sneeze to but <coughs> sorry about that i have such good manners <laughs> uh apologies about that it's fucking nasty let me just make sure that this is all good. Uh, let's see. Okay, cool. Let me just make sure that I'm actually uh, okay. Got that all on camera. Great. <laughs> Fucking great, man. Anyways, uh, yeah. If we if we were to close above the yellow twenty one exponential, um, that would be my my personal signal for 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 looking for a much greater extension of this run. Um, into the 6,000s, uh, maybe even maybe in 7,000 at that point. Um, and generally, I would be more on the bullish side for a more macro time frame perspective. However, there will be dissenting opinions with that because technically speaking, we actually don't make a higher high until we get back above, realistically speaking, the, the 77, 7,800 hump right over here. Uh, when Bitcoin does that, then we'll have a higher high. We don't necessarily have a higher low just yet on the monthly. In fact, we'll have to, at some point, we will make everyone kind of hold their breath for a second and put in a higher low, likely somewhere right around here. If this were to be a turnaround this this would be kind of documenting this but for right now we are being be held in below this area or actually well actually technically we're above it right now by about 10 bucks on uh, on bitstamp but my point is is that this operates on a monthly total time frame so keep in mind that we are you know in the 10th day of april there's a lot of damage that can be done between now and the end of the month um much more than uh, than than ten dollars worth of damage. So so keep that in mind. If we do end below the twenty one exponential, does that mean that it's over for the bulls? No, it doesn't. But it would it it wouldn't it it would be. Uh, would it be expected? I don't know. If, I don't know if expectations are the right word. To, right word to have. It's those are typically not not what you want to be having in trading. But um, but what I would say is that when I do look at this. You know, more often than not, you are going to sell off on your first pass, and this is the first pass right here. We've been living away from this yellow twenty-minute exponential on the monthly since uh, November of 2018. More importantly, this is very important for long-term trend, in my opinion. Uh, this is what I use in traditional marks to judge if a stock, if if an equity was was essentially bullish, essentially bearish on a on a longer-term time frame. For above the twenty-one exponential, this yellow moving average right here, generally bullish. If you're below it, generally bearish. You can see you can kind of back test it for Bitcoin, uh, going all the way back to 2014, 2015, when Bitcoin lost twenty-one exponential. That was when it was shuffled on down to its ultimate red dildo capitulation death hole death and decay just drop down baby and once we actually regained the 21 exponential moving average right over here well that was full speed ahead for a perfectly timed bullish momentum trade all the way from $300 to almost $20,000 price per bitcoin that's the importance of it to me um but like i said there you know there will be other other veins of thoughts from other people who will say you know you got to get higher i completely understand that but i would be comfortable with, with making the call beforehand um and and like I always say, man, I want to be bullish. I want to be bullish more than anyone else because first, moon boobs, and second, this is what I do for a living. I mean, my life, my 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 living becomes a hundred billion times easier when it's a bull market. You don't need to, you don't need to be a professional trader to make money in a bull market. I know that people want to sound sexy and cool and, and make it sound like it's 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 really it's really difficult. But I'm sure you know if you were around in 2017, uh, all you had to do was quite literally just hodl. That is where that is where that meme actually does work. To be fair, um, hodling is 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 a decent strategy in a bull market. In a downwards market, though, fuck no. Um, which is what we've been in for the past year and still technically as far as the higher time frames go still in a downwards market so yeah that is why I'm cautious as as the higher time frames go lower time frames like I said though I would be looking I, I would really like to see a pullback off this area and buy that pullback so my my strategy the the basis of my strategy is the same um, whether we break above or below this current area that we're looking at I'm either a buyer of a breakout or I am a buyer somewhere in this 48 to 4900 ish level right over here this is also going to be supported by 
buy the 12 hour 21 exponential, which you can see is slowly crawling its way up at, uh, at 4,900 right now. And because we are printing a little bit of bearish divergence on this baby, uh, typically I do want to see a test back down to to, uh, to that yellow 21 exponential. However, we do have a competing narrative on this. This is overall, the 12 hour is overall bullish. It's been bullish for a while. We have the golden cross right over here. I do not trade against that. Uh, so it's not that I'm bearish, just that I'd be happy to buy a pullback and get on the side of the trend. And that's really the art of trading is just making it easier for yourself, recognizing the trend and just jumping on that, just jumping on onto the onto the little tail fin of a, of a whale and, uh, and, and grabbing on um that's that's essentially what we're trying to do is charting out what the big market movers are doing and uh and figure out how we can uh how we can basically jump on with them i mean i, I always like to say this if you're not you know if you're not playing with at least hundreds of millions of dollars in your account you're probably not a market mover so it's be, it's a better strategy to to figure out what they're doing and go with them as they can actually quite literally move the market yes that's right people with extremely big pockets they can actually move the market with a market order ah now it all starts to make sense maybe maybe watching the order book's not gonna make so much sense anymore now look. Uh, anyways, uh, while we're on here on the 12-hour total time frame, the last time that we got a 12-hour total golden cross, and I'm referring to the green 50 exponential and the uh, purple 200 exponential, was quite literally all the way in 2016. Uh, that was the last time that we actually saw one. And so this is why it's very powerful and very, very important to me. I believe it was right over here. Yeah, September 2016, leading all the way from about $593 to 20, almost $20,000 price per Bitcoin. Again, a very, 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 very powerful move. And overall, when I do say, see something like like this i mean does it offer up the potential that we have continuation before a pullback yeah absolutely absolutely and i don't want to make it sound like it's one-sided i'm just saying that if we get a pullback that's where i become a lot more interested to buy do i think that it's more likely that we get a pullback sooner rather than later yeah probably do but the trading you know the trading doesn't trade sorry the trading doesn't change either way and that's really what i want to get out De separating the opinion from technical analysis don't need to trade. I, I never trade my opinion. Of course, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but I hope that I'm very clear with this. I mean, I've been long this whole way through, even though I would kind of be looking for a pullback. Um, you know, around that 4,900 level. It's also going to be supported by the by the weekly Trollinger bands as well. We closed our first weekly Trollinger band above the top Trollinger band, which is something that we just haven't done since 2017, right over here, uh, when Bitcoin was trending pretty damn hard to the upside. And usually when that happens, you're going to come back and retest the uh, the the uh, the upper Trollinger band and then rally off that. It's probably, it's very, very high probability to bounce. And where is that coming in? Around 4,900. So both these things kind of lining up with each other, which does make me a little bit more, you know, a, a, a little bit more, um, leaning towards a pullback rather than continuation first and foremost. But like I said, either which way, the idea is the same. The idea is the same. And that's the big point that I'm trying to make. More importantly, or just as uh, as as uh, as of equal importance, we don't want to be judges over here. No, they are both very important. Um, but we have both opened and closed our first weekly total above the median Trollinger band, which is just a 20 cent moon average right over here um, in late March, which was also kind of the impetus for me holding on to this long for a little bit of time as just we haven't done that since late 2017 early 2018 right over here um and usually that's going to lead on to a trendy move to the upside and uh, and that's exactly what we're kind of getting right now so keep that in mind overall uh this operates on a weekly little time frame so this you know th this this pullback could happen anytime between now and on uh, sunday at 8 p.m eastern in time i really would like to see a pullback into this area as it would it, it would flush out the structure for this movement a lot more and i would say that actually uh, it actually add validity to it if bitcoin takes off from this area i'd say that that actually kind of diminishes my thoughts on this rally uh, but so far the rally has been good and could very easily get continuation to that 56 5700 level um, which could then in turn, as the month progresses, have carry on over into the monthly, which we just spoke about, which would be, which would kind of open up the floodgates for, for letting this baby run, you know, higher. It, I mean, I'd say definitely into the 6,000 at that point and, uh, and probably even 7,000s. Um, probably, probably does give a test somewhere into this range right over here if that were to happen on the monthly, if we take out the monthly resistance. But for right now, it's still way too early to be even be really considering such things. And, uh, and realistically, I'm just playing the lower time frames right now to kind of protect myself either which way because I don't want to commit to a bullish or bearish position uh, on the weekly right over here. Yes, we are getting resisted by this green 50 exponential and this uh, cyan 89 exponential, which have crossed the downside. We have a lower period crossing the downside of a higher period, which would say that the overall trend is getting shuffled and strengthened to the downside. They are not gaining divergence away from each other, however. And, uh, and you know, same kind of idea right over here. You know, I, I, I would be looking for a rejection on first pass. However, we do see that Bitcoin has done something 
I would say more important to me. This this is more important. Bitcoin has closed a weekly total above this weekly uh, above the 200 exponential moving average right over here. That's the that's the purple moving average right here, and on very good volume as well. Not very good volume, but relatively good volume. If we were to put this into dollar valuation, it would be absolutely nothing. But more importantly, when I do look at something like this, it, I think to myself that uh, this is what held us down below in this more aggressive portion of the downtrend below you know 4,000 ish area uh, for about five months. And Bitcoin breaking above that area, it you know it just it adds on to the case that, hey, I want to be looking for a pullback and be a buyer of that pullback. Not, I'm, I'm not trying to time the, the, the top right here. I'm, I need to see something else, which we'll look at in just a second. But on top of that, we also closed our first weekly little above this uh, yellow 21 exponential the first time in, you know, about half, more than almost a year as well. And uh, and we'll have a chance to both open and close above, above both those moving averages by the end of this week, which is just going to add more validity onto this. And to me, that would open up the floodgates for a move likely higher. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> Speaking about all of this, you know, it's sounding all well and good, but now I want to present the higher time frame perspective, which I haven't really fleshed out all that much just yet. And more importantly, it is still unchanged. So we look at the weekly, we do see weekly, weekly RSI getting to levels that we haven't seen since uh, since since all of the 2016 area right over here, the whole run um, between 2016 to, to 2018 on that massive bull attempt. We're actually living above that right now. We're going to have a, I, have we confirmed above this? I think that we have confirmed above it. Yeah. Yeah, we have because th this is the only part moving right now. Okay. Fair enough. I, I take, I take that back. That area actually has been taken out. Uh, but but also of great importance, we do have the weekly stoke, or sorry, the, 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 the weekly stokes right over here getting very high as well. Um, of course, we already went over all of the resistances looming overhead. We got the daily 377, two, uh, two day 200, three day 200, weekly 50 and 89, monthly 21, all very important for overall trend. And mo more importantly, when we do look at some fundamental indicators like the MBT signal, the good old MBT signal, once again, rearing its head, this is the network value divided by the daily transaction value, which is essentially a fundamental indicator. And that is signaling red and this thing has been goddamn perfect in calling all of the major tops and bottoms in bitcoin's history the key to this is though is that it can stay red for a while before the move actually does populate itself out so i would be overall cautious this is my point i'm not you know while i am holding long right now i'm very 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 happy to let it go if we do start breaking back below uh 4800 4900 ish area that would be kind of my trigger for that to let go of a more intermediate uh, position uh, based off of the higher time frames. But remember, just because it's red does not mean that it dumps immediately. It, it can stay in this area for months at a time, as we've seen in the past. Uh, more importantly, I have found in the past that, uh, that that the MBT signal in confluence with the Stokes, with the daily Stokes, actually has called some pretty damn good, to uh, ha has actually helped time the tops with in correlation to the MBT signal. So let's just kind of run this back and, uh, and look at this right now. But basically, we did we did put in a high right here on the 8000 level right over here if i bring up the stokes and highlight the exact same area this is this area right over here this the daily stokes were turning down when the actual move did happen but look we were signaling red for a few weeks before about a week beforehand the time before that was right over here you can see that bitcoin was red for about a couple weeks two three weeks right over here and then once the daily stokes turn right over here that was when the initial down or sorry the the main downfall happened uh, we can go back further obviously on the high of 20 of of, uh, of end of 2017 at 20,000, you can see that Bitcoin was red all the way through. But it wasn't until this area right here when <laughs> when the daily Stokes turned back down around and uh, and and a top was was well timed. So right now we are we are getting pretty damn high um, on not just the MBT signal but also on the daily Stokes, which are way up here. But more importantly, they have not crossed to the downside. They are still technically up. So I want to see these guys cross down, and that could perhaps. That could perhaps help top when the next MBT signal is going to, or sorry, perhaps tell time when the next MBT signal is, is, is likely to play out. So keep that in mind because it has been decent, you know, decent in the past. Uh, also, we will be having potentially, I shouldn't say this, but... <clears throat> We technically do not have bearish divergence on the daily right now. However, if we do t if we do tick any lower than fifty one twenty five, we will have we will have uh, daily uh, daily RSI divergence confirmed, which is also what I want to see on the next high. So the question now is is it, it, it's 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 a game of time. How much damage can be done by the bulls before these these things start to you know tick on over? The longer that Bitcoin stays here without breaking out, the more and more likely it becomes that it actually does turn down. However. I would imagine that if we are going to break this out, it probably does happen today or tomorrow. 
and if and and if that does happen the the damage is very likely to bring this all the way up to 5650 50, maybe even 5700 in this next blocky territory so keep that in mind there you know there's a very nice trade to be made here both ways whether it's to 5600 or whether it's to 4900 it's you know the the actions are the same so again agnosticism as a trader is absolute key right now uh, to not you know to not to not really commit to a position either which way until we actually get confirmation on this one this is the time in my opinion, to not be playing support and resistance, this is the time to be playing a breakout. Um, if you, you know, if you are going to be, a tr if you are going to be trading this, and uh, and and I, and I and I strongly believe that. So here's the thing: is uh, my my main point. Don't get caught in. A, if you are going to get caught in a position right here. Be quick to manage risk. Be quick to manage risk, and know where you're going to manage risk. If you know, if we break out above here, I strongly you got to. I mean, I'd strongly suggest closing that fucking position and flipping long. Uh, by the same token, if we break down below here, strongly, uh, strongly uh, suggest closing that position and flipping short. Um, of course, so this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Just sharing with uh, with you what I do in these sorts of same situations. But like I said, um, on this uh, long red over here, I'm just going to keep this open. And really, my strategy for this is that if we break down, I'm just going to sell some more calls against it and collect on that. If we break up, I actually buy back the calls or maybe even buy back some more spot on top of this. And that's completely fine by me. The again, the 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 idea is the same, and multiple ways to manage something like that, especially with options, which makes it which I'm just so much more comfortable with. Anyways, um, okay, let me make sure that all my screens are safe and safe over there. There we go. No forex. I I missed my only forex trade of this morning by fucking two, uh, it was like two uh, dot zero zero two. Jesus Christ, man. Ah, that's that's very frustrating sometimes. Very frustrating, but you know what? I, I'm not gonna chase it. Um, anyways, okay. So we spoke enough about Bitcoin. Let's go check out. Um, do we want to check out CMEs? Yeah, let's go check out CMEs. Daily CMEs are actually still below the 200 exponential. Funnily enough, so that is our that is our primary resistance right over there. But uh, you can see that right now. Funnily enough, the highest volume that you see. Everyone's talking about this. The highest volume day on CME history. It's right here. Sorry, it's it's right. Let me highlight. It. It's right here. You can see that massive girthy girthy uh, gray dildo sticking up to the sky it was actually all selling <laughs> you know it was, it was actually all selling funnily enough uh, that was a major that uh, that was a nice pullback day um, so that's what everyone's kind of uh, going crazy about right now it's, it's very strange I mean you can just look at the charts and very quickly realize that the headlines are misleading <laughs> they do that crazy uh, we got daily stokes still up uh, getting very aggressive right now and we do have a little bit of, uh, do we have any bearish divergence going on right now? Nope, we do not have a confirmed local high just yet. Uh, but but ultimately, we're, we're seeing the same thing. We see major resistance in this area, the same area that we see on spot. Uh, going over to GBDC, GBDC is doing something different. GBDC is doing something different. Um, GBDC hanging it up really high uh, near, the, near the October, November uh, range, which is very bizarre because that would equate to Bitcoin being around that 6,000 level. So we're actually, we're, we should get... We should get confirmation very soon if GBDC is is either a leader or if it's just doing its own fucking thing. If you see Bitcoin take another step up towards that, you know, 6,000-ish level, uh, then GBDC will still be the leader. And I was wrong about denouncing it as still leading the market. Um, if you see Bitcoin not follow, if you see Bitcoin break down here, then I'd say that GBDC is just doing its own thing. And it's just no longer really really that relevant or, or tradable in the same way. And I need to take some of this water, man. I'm damn thirsty. Alrighty, so yeah, that's what I'd be watch watchful of today, um, because GBDC would be suggesting that we actually approach that uh, uh, October November lows. So look at the weekly for a second. Yeah, weekly is right at resistance as well, getting getting rejected by the 50 exponential as you'd imagine. Um, let's go check out this. I forgot to bring this up. Uh, Bitcoin longs and shorts: 26,000 open longs versus 18 and a half thousand open shorts. The thing is with this is that, <clears throat> you know. There is a great imbalance between the two. I do know that someone, you know, like like actual a singular person closed about a 5,000 or 6,000 uh, coin short on Finex the other day. Um, ultimately, though, my main point with this is that if I had to put an interpretation on this, it would lean to the bearish side um, in confluence with the with the MBT signal, in confluence with all the major exponentials that are looming overhead. Sorry about that. All the ground beef coming up right now with also confluence on uh, what else do we look at? You know, all of our oscillators looking a little bit tired, and uh, and if we bring up the titty sequential, we can actually show some nines on there as well, uh, which have not been playing out. 
<clears throat> but more importantly, just another kind of thing that that would be on the bearish side as we do have a great imbalance between the two, which does offer up potential for a massive attack. The thing is, is that we did just have 6,000 more shorts um, available a few days ago, which were settled off exchange most likely. So we don't really know the prices of that and we can't really look into it too much. I know a lot of people are trying to dissect this, but I think it's just kind of, you know, of the things to put importance on and to focus on, I want to put importance on things that are more tangible that we can actually figure out we're not going to have any sort of leeway into that sort of information unless if unless if you know that person or if you are that person um, and know the details of that deal <clears throat> you know and how it was settled and if they settled it you know if they found some sort of a buyer OTC and did it that way and, and that's and that's how it's kind of taken care of we just don't know and uh, it, it, and, and that's a big thing so you know, if I had to say anything about that, yeah, I guess it'd be a little bit more to the downside. But remember, that's more of a higher time frame type look. Uh, when we go back to Bitcoin, it's extremely important to separate the medium to low time frames from the high and the macro time frames, which I hope that I've been making extremely clear. So, <clears throat> anyways, spoke about all of that. Let's go check out the other top, uh, the other top shit coins. We got Mrs. Litecoin right over here, charging it back up, rounding off the exact area that we spoke about yesterday, and probably going to grind this area out. I'd imagine uh, daily looks like it could. Daily looks. Mm, Daily kind of did already get into the area that we were looking for. What was it? The 12 hour? Yeah, 12 hour 10 simple kind of rejecting price action right now. Uh, 12 hour, 12 hour support right around 82 and a half bucks. It looks like um, overall some bearish divergence being played out. Uh, I would, you know, this one is looking like it's kind of putting in a little bit of a top right now. We do have daily stokes actually still upwards and onwards. So I would be still be looking for this to actually get extended a little bit more, perhaps um, maybe around this uh, $92.5 region right over here. But I do think that we are in the midst of putting in a little bit of a uh, of a short term top. Now, does that mean that I'm bearish on Mrs. Litecoin? No. In fact, Mrs. Litecoin is the one that I'd probably be most most bullish on because this is what I want to see on a bottom. If Bitcoin looks like this, I'd be calling a bottom on Bitcoin, but I'm not. I'm calling a bottom on Mrs. Litecoin um, at $22. Uh, I mean, I've been bullish on Mrs. Litecoin, especially ever since this area right over here, but more prelim preliminarily, uh, as soon as it got above $50, $50 right over here. Uh, this is very important to me. This is why I have that rule where when you have a golden cross on the daily, I do not, I, I'm not, I'm not bearish on anything that looks like that. And while everyone was kind of trying to call, you know, major bearish divergence on a daily stokes down, you know, all the, you know, all the different tentacles telling you that this thing's going down, the exponentials don't lie. They don't lie, baby. And so we got the next move up, actually even hitting our $100 target. So I would be looking for this one to put in some more time uh, grinding this top out, you know, maybe pop back yeah, around to that $92.5, $93 uh, area right over here. But uh, but ultimately, <clears throat> I do think that this one probably is putting in a little bit more of a short-term top. However, when I go down to a four-hour total time frame, I mean, you can see that uh, while this formation was broken to the downside, we do have something new forming right now. We do have... Do we have an ascending triangle? We kind of do have an ascending triangle. Uh, would it look right? Um, would it look right? Mm, volumes, volumes okay. Shape is okay. It's kind of sloppy. Could work though. It could work. Um, my point is though is that uh, I, you know either which way I would be looking forward to put in some time in this in, in this formation right here. And uh, this one does look more toppy than something like Bitcoin to me. I believe that we did get a daily total sell on the jewel just a few days ago. <clears throat> yeah, right over here. Nice nice sell signal. So I'd still be kind of rolling with that. While I do think that it pops up and kind of grinds this area out as we've been saying for the past couple of days. Uh, ultimately, I would like to see a retracement down to the 21 exponential, which is actually currently around mid 70s, uh, about 76 right now. Uh, on Finex, on on uh, on 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 a GDAX, it's probably all the way down at like 75. Yeah, yeah, about 75. So overall, I'm not bearish on something like that, but it's it's kind of the same as Bitcoin. I'd be looking to buy a pullback. Um, weekly looks very good. Weekly looks weekly looks completely fine. I mean, th again, this is exactly what I want to see on a, on a major market cycle low, increasing volume to the upside and a V bottom out of there. Beautiful, just fucking beautiful. If if everything looked like Mrs. Litecoin, this this market would be so much easier right now, uh, but it's not. But it's not. Anyways, uh, going over to Mr. Buterol. Mr. Buterol also grinding this uh, 200 exponential moving average right over here, but actually looking like actually looking a little bit strong in this area. Uh, Mr. Buterol to me kind of looks like he wants to break it. Um, we got four hour Stokes about to cross the upside. We got a nice walk up behavior going on going on right over here, which you can see we broke out of this initial formation of the upside, and we've just been using that same support to rally off of I think I think that that is constructive that is that is quite powerful however the resistance is all the same 183 if 183 breaks then I start looking towards the next target which 
you know, technically the next target would be 190, but I, I, if, if this thing breaks up, it's going to go higher. It's, it's going to go to like 210 or 220. <laughs> it's what's going to happen. I, I mean, I, you know that I typically back off from making statements like that, but it, if that area does get taken out, it's likely to go to 210 or 220. Um, we see daily Stokes up and gaining momentum. We see daily RSI fine. Uh, what about the weekly? Yeah, the week, you know, the weekly is what makes me a little bit apprehensive because I would like to see a pullback on this one as well. Anywhere around the weekly 21 exponential at around uh, 163, 162 uh, would probably be the would probably be the buy zone for me. But uh, but right now, Mr. Uh, sorry. Yeah, Mr. Buterall actually hinting at some upwards momentum right now. So again, going to depend on what the rest of the market does. But uh, this one, this one actually looks like it wants to break, so breaks, break to the upside, like sooner rather than later, like today. I would be saying that Mr. Butyrol is looking more bullish. Mrs. Litecoin looking a little bit bearish. Mr. Bitcoin uh, kind of right in the fucking middle, man. Kind of right in the middle. But like I said, the apex on all these formations is coming in later today. Or sorry, tomorrow, which means that we probably get to get a decision today. Uh, oh, man. Did I just miss another trade right over there? I think we could actually get in this. Nah, I'll wait. I'll wait it out. All right. Anyways, um, um, um. Let's see. Ooh, that was fast. Uh, okay. So yeah, uh, I'd say Mr. Beater. I'll probably looking a little bit more bullish. And if we do break that next, uh, sorry, it was 183. Yeah, 183. Technically, 190s, 191 or 192 is my next target. But it, realistically, looking at plus 200, like 210, 220, maybe. Uh, oh, you know, over the next week or two or, or, or whatever it might be. <clears throat> okay, cool. We spoke all about that. Let's go check out traditional marks really quick. We got traditional marks right over here. Uh, look, looking to me like we are going to be putting in a, or that, that top yesterday was kind of confirmed. And I would still be looking for that move back down to about 283, fill this gap down around here. Also fill another test of this rising trend line. We are, we are kind of forming out a rising wedge. Um, which typically, which technically does, or sorry, typically does break out to the downside more often than not. We do see four hour stokes pointed downwards. We do see four hour RSI given some bearish divergence. So I do, be, I do believe that this wants to play out, you know, relatively soon. I would be looking for an initial bounce right around here, around 285 and uh, three quarters. Um, and then overall, I'd be looking for a, a retracement a little bit lower at about 283 and a half, 280, or sorry, 283 to 282 and a half area down over here. So again, um, over the overall picture is certainly still, uh, I'd say, is still bullish, but we are putting in a little bit of a local top right now. Um, so, 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 and I'll be rolling with that as long as we're respecting this area right here. As long as we're respecting 288 and a half, uh, I, I, I'd be, I'd be holding, I'd be holding on to that. And I do believe that we actually have seen, you know, initial confirmation of this. Um, let's go see what else do we, what else do we got to talk about? Let's talk about Cardano. Good old, good old Cardano right over here. Uh, yep, came down to our first, came down to our target about 1600 Satoshis, and I'd be looking for a bounce. Probably bounces back up, tries to test, you know, a little bit above 1700. And I do believe that that will probably be sold into i do want to see this one come down well hold on you know maybe i'm being a little bit too aggressive with something like this we do have a golden cross we are above the tw we are technically above the 21 right now i do think that this bounce gets extended a little bit more but i think that it's going to spend some time consolidating between about 1750 and uh in 1600 and then we'll kind of figure it out from there uh weekly does to me look like it wants to retrace a little bit lower weekly support is actually all the way down at 1400 which i would say would be a that that would be a warning signal if it gets down around there that's you really do not want to give up 1400 anymore if 1400 does get lost uh this would turn in from a potential uh, from a potential bottoming formation to an actual new low most likely if that if that were to happen that'd be really fucking nasty is it possible absolutely but uh but 1400 is the area to kind of manage that upon um yeah, we, weekly does look like it wants to kind of, kind of come down a little bit more. So, so very short term time frames, looking for a bounce. Uh, higher time frames probably probably does have a retracement a little bit deeper. Um, yeah, I'd probably look for the bounce around seventeen hundred to seventeen fifty, most likely. Uh, okay, cool. BNB cone, BNB uh, bouncing as well off the area that we spoke about yesterday, off the twenty one exponential. Beautifully done. Uh, and this is, you know, and, and I really like this one because we were able to follow this one for the past like week, week and a half. We 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 noticed the jewel selling setting up for a sell signal on the daily right and we we documented each and every day it was like okay it's getting closer it's getting closer and then right around here it actually gave the signal which was at a price point at around uh, 19 and a half dollars well since then we got our full retrace down to the 17 and a quarter ish area do we come down lower now is a question i mean that was also that was already a pretty damn good move um <clears throat> and the thing is with the jewel I actually do look for bounces off this territory right here so while i do think that we probably do try to fill in you know fill in this area between uh low 18 to high 18 dollars 
Uh, I do think that this one probably does want to come down a little bit more. Uh, looking at the weekly, the weekly is getting very tired. We see weekly stocks getting uh, hinting at across to the downside. Weekly supports all the way down around uh, fourteen and a half dollars or so. So it does have quite a bit of time to go, but uh, but that's also on a weekly. So that would, you know we're talking about weeks and weeks of price action now. Uh, you know out. Um, next target would probably be about $16 if it breaks down from 17, 17 and a quarter. If you see 17 and a quarter break, I'm looking towards 16, uh, to be clear. <clears throat> okay. Zcash, uh, Zcash looks like it wants to pop back up and test around 77 bucks, but I do believe that this one's putting in a little bit of a top as well. Uh, putting in some bearish divergence along the way on the daily daily stokes are, are still up. So yes, I do think that we have enough juice to test this 77, sorry, about 77 and a half actually. Um, uh, but ultimately I do, well, should I be more lenient on something like this? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, this one does want to test higher. And actually, when I look at the weekly, this one this one wants to break higher. Sorry, I'd be more bullish on this one. I'd be more bullish on this one. Uh, probably, probably does reach for 80, 86 and a half bucks. Uh, Bcash, um, what, do we have on, what do we have on over here? Uh, maintaining above the 200 exponential, daily stokes just cross back upwards and onwards. Not bad. Not bad. Does have some bearish divergence confirmed though, so that's not good. What about the weekly? Yeah, weekly can retrace all the way down here to 243. I, I'd be looking for a retracement on this one overall. Uh, Tron Cash. Tron Cash hit our target of 3.22 cents, and what do we do now? It does look like it wants to give another test up to this area, 3.2-ish uh, 3, 3 area, um, and then we'll kind of judge it from there, but I do believe that I... Call me crazy, man, but I I think that Tron might have bottomed actually. Uh, Tron Tron's kind of putting in a little bit of a uh, it's it's putting in a formation down here. Uh, people are going to call this an, an inverted head and shoulders. It, it actually kind of is. It actually kind of is. Um, we do have a nice do we have a nice neckline right over here? Yeah, something like that. We're actually right at it. We're actually right at it. So realistically speaking, if this one can actually break above this uh, three point two two cents region. Uh, we can talk about higher target, but ultimately I'd just be, you know, I'd just be looking for a nice move up or, you know, I, I'd, I'd be bullish probably around four cents over four cents. Uh, Neo cash, what's Neo cash doing? Uh, pro probably looking for a bounce a little bit higher. I'd like to see it retest us, uh, 13 and uh, 13 and three quarters. Um, but I do believe that this one's put in a little bit of a top as well. Uh, weekly support. Did we already test this? Ooh, kind of, you know, maybe that was the buy right there. I think we might've already gotten it. That was it right there. Yeah. I, I would actually, I would actually made, manage trades on that. Very easy to manage off of $12 manage, man, uh, risk management tool and, uh, and, and let the chips fall where they may. Uh, EOS cash looks like it wants to take another leg right now. Powerful EOS, powerful. Next target six, uh, 674. I can put it, it can, can put this area in right now. Uh, right over here. Yeah, about 670, sorry, 677, whatever it is, right over here. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? Uh, XRP cash, 35 and a half cents. Uh, again, I'd be more bullish on this one. I think that we already got the retracement to buy on this one um, yesterday to 30, what was it, 34 and a half cent? Yeah, right over here. Um, as spoken about yesterday, I would be looking for this one to retest uh, 36 and a half cent. Uh, and ultimately, I would, like, I would like to see this one test a uh, little over 40 cents right over here. I do think that that's quite a strong move. Holy fucking moly, man. Nice buyback on uh, pound versus yen. Jesus. Uh, whoops, you already talked about Neo. Uh, we just talked about, uh, let's go over to Monero. Yeah, there we go. Monero is looking a little bit more, a little bit more toppy to me, actually. Let's go over to a weekly. Okay, weekly has a lot of supports right here. Yeah, I ultimately this one does want to test higher. That's the thing. As far as the weekly is governed, um, what about a daily though? Daily is kind of putting in an ascending triangle right here, actually. Uh, daily Stokes up. Yeah, I, I just need to see it break about seventy-one and a half bucks, and I'll be looking for that next target somewhere right around here, uh, eighty-three, eighty-four. Yeah, not bad. Uh, Stellar Cash, what's Stellar Cash doing? <clears throat> I think Stellar Cash putting in a little bit of a top. Uh, some major bearish divergence going all the way through here. Um, still being beheld in below the 200 exponential, but more importantly, this one's a little bit difficult to judge because I do believe that we are putting a little bit of a bottom information as well on this guy. And more importantly, this trend line being born all the way from 2017 still seems to be respected. Or is it respected? This is the problem with diagonals because you know a little a little small degree in price action can amount for okay, did we break it or not? I'd say that this is the right way to do it, and we actually did break it. But to break back down below it the next day on extremely low volume is not a good signal. And more importantly, I want to see it match up with the horizontal, which we have not broken past that one, and we've not really broken past that one either. So I would say that this one is not broken, and this one was an overthrow, and the people using diagonals are gonna get faked out. Um, doesn't mean that it, can, that it still can't break up to the upside, but uh, but looking at the weekly, um, ooh, hold on. 
I kind of like what I see on the weekly. Uh, we have gotten that retest of the 21. Um, you know, am I going to be wrong in this? Is it just time to be bullish right now? Yeah, I think so. I, 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 I do think so. Uh, it's, it's an easy trade to manage either which way. If, if you are long in this one, 12.2 cents is where I'd be managing off of. That's what I'd be saying. Uh, let's see. I do want to take this trade right now. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. And let me just put in an, put an alert right here. There we go. There we go. All right, and 24. Okay, great. Let me just put another alert for that. <laughs> Got to be very careful. Um. Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, that's what I'm thinking right over there. Uh, let's go check out, um, what else we want to check out? We checked out traditional marks. We checked out all the shit coins. Checked out the Bitcoins. Um, yeah, I guess we could just start to, uh, we can start to wrap it up now. So Bitcoin, right? <clears throat> again, uh, on higher time frames against all major movement averages, uh, on lower time frames is putting in the sending triangle, which typically does imply more bullishly resolved nature. If I had to pick direction, I, for, for whatever reason, I do feel like this one wants to retrace first. But hey, if we do take out 5300, no, I would be looking for a long all the way up to um, what's it called? Uh, uh, 56 to 57. Uh, we also do have, I forgot to mention this, but we do have, and it's not my favorite thing to do either, but the titty sequential also suggesting a high as well. We put in a nine right over here. In fact, this is this is the validity of the titty sequential in case you're wondering. Um, if you go over to the three day, um, you know, we did put in a nine right over here, but we we're just marching it higher. Uh, if we go over to, whoop, not the monthly, but the weekly, we put in a nine uh, on the last week as well. So, you know, just because it calls a nine doesn't mean that it needs to fall over immediately, but it does say uh, just another warning sign. So for the bears, they got all the major moving averages looming overhead. They got the MBT signal. They have the longs and the shorts ratio uh, more more so on their side. They got the titty sequential also on their side. For the bulls, all the lower time frames are bullish right now. Um, so that those competing narratives, again, the way to trade it uh, right now, as far as I'm concerned, is the same either which way, whether you're bullish or bearish. Very, 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 very simple. We break above 5,300. I'm looking for a move towards 56, 57. And if we break below 5,200, I'm looking for a move, you know, ultimately down to 5050 and bounce probably there and then probably get the full retrace down to 48, 4900 ish area. So that's going to do it for today. Been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. I'll be back on tomorrow with some more, or sorry, I'll be back on tonight with some more live stream action. But also tonight, I'm actually going to be on Hyperwave channel as well. So really looking forward to that meeting uh, Tyler and Leah. And uh, and yeah, if you if you want to tune in, it'll be right after my, my live stream. So uh, so if, if I don't see you until then, well, I want to wish you a happy, healthy day. And if not, well, I want to wish you a happy and healthy day anyways. <laughs> anyways, uh, I'll be signing off now and take care.